Voices in the Void Argent sat at the comms unit, the cans on his head as he idly toyed with the dial. He'd been on duty for several hours now, and just like every shift before, he hadn't heard a single thing. With every click of the counter, though, he listened to a different flavor of silence. He didn't actually expect to hear anything, not this deep in the black, but he never knew what kind of signals you might find until you went looking for them. Defunct boarding stations, ancient proximity buoys marking asteroid fields, sometimes something stranger. It was all a roll of the die. Argent was so focused on his task he didn't hear anyone join him at the comm station. Then a boot kicked his chair hard enough that he almost fell out of his seat. The hell do you think you're doing? Grady demanded in a low snarl. The older, grizzled spacer had a clinch tray in one hand with two steaming, lidded mugs anchored into it. I'm monitoring the channels like the captain ordered me to, Argent said, pulling off his headset and gesturing at the comms. Just what the hell are you doing here during dark hours? Sir. Grady's lip curled like he had something venomous on his tongue. His eyes dropped to the right side of Argent's chest where a green patch of a multi-headed dragon took place of pride on his jumpsuit. Grady sighed, shaking his head. He placed the tray on the desk with exaggerated care, then took one of the mugs for himself. Grady pressed his thumb into the lock and popped the lid off with one hand. The strong smell of undiluted black calf filled the room as he sipped. This is your first posting on a civilian vessel, isn't it? Grady asked. What of it? Arjun asked. He glanced at the other mug, but made no move to take it. I seen the Hydra back when she was first launched, Grady said, taking another sip of his brew. She has a full complement of big guns, capital class firepower, just in case. You got something to say, say it, Arjun said. You ain't in the Navy anymore, Grady said. You don't cycle the whole dial looking for trouble to rush into this part of the black. We're an ice hauler. We trek out the cold fields, pick up our load, then trek back to where they need the water. You've got one open frequency out here that's in use among all vessels. If there's an emergency beacon, it'll set off the red light there, and you'll see it. I read the entire ship's operating log my first three shifts in this chair. There is nothing written in there about monitoring only one channel, Argent said. Grady didn't say anything for a long moment. He just sipped his brew and eyed the young man. Finally, he said, You always follow what it said in the protocol book when you still had bars on your collar? Argent pursed his lips for a moment. Felt like the tension in the room might just spill over into violence, rank or no rank. Then Argent deliberately took the other mug, popped off the top, and took a sip. You juice this up. Arjun said, surprised. Two whites and a bite, Grady said with a nod. Nothing keeps a ship together like knowing how your mates take the gojo. Neither of them said anything for a few minutes after that, each of them enjoying their brews in silence. It was Arjun who broke it, choosing his words carefully. Why aren't we supposed to do a wide scan of the frequencies out here? He asked. Grady didn't answer for a moment. He just stared off into the middle distance, his dark eyes bleary and unfocused. Just as Argent was about to let the matter drop, Grady shook his head and took a ragged breath. There's things out here you don't want to hear, the old spacer said, rubbing at his eyes. Dead beacons putting out broadcasts that are just starting to rot. Abandoned channels that run the same noise on meaningless loops. Void sirens just waiting to capture your ear and distract you so you don't see a real emergency coming till it's too late. Void sirens? Arjun asked, raising an eyebrow. Grady waved it off, taking another sip of his brew. I'll tell you some other time. We've got a lot of hours on this run and those stories will keep. For now, hit the head and stretch your legs. I'll man the comm till you get back. <laughs>